If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Now, let us see the occipital headgears. It derives anchorage from the occipital region that is the back of the head. Okay? And it produces distal translation of molar and sometimes slight superior component of force may also be seen. Next, we have the combination pull headgear. It derives anchorage from at least two regions. You can see the neck here and the occiput here. And it causes distal and slightly superior force on the maxilla and the dentition. Then we have the high pull headgear. It derives anchorage from the parietal region, that is the front of the head here, and produces intrusion and distalization of the teeth. Okay? It is causing intrusion and distalization of teeth. Now, principle of force application in headgear therapy. So, as we know, the force is applied by means of springs elastic to move the dentition and the maxilla in all the three planes of space. Okay? So, for the force, we are using springs. Let me change the color. I hope you can see. Or elastics. Okay? Now, point of origin of force. So, this is the anchor site of the headgear. So, the point of origin of force, it could be the neck or the occipital region. It could be the neck or the cervical or occipital region. Occipital region or it could be both. Now, the point of attachment of force is also important. The point of attachment is that point of the outer bow to which the force element is attached. So, let's suppose this is our outer bow. It is the point of the outer bow to which the force element is attached. So, by altering the length or angulation of the outer bow, it is possible to alter the line of action of force. Keep this in mind. Now, let us see center of resistance. Here, in this diagram, we see a body here. And let us suppose we are applying force at this point. Okay? And if on applying the force at this point, the body moves all together from here to here, that is, we are having a translation of the body, that means this point is the center of resistance. So, center of resistance is the point through which the resultant force acting upon a body would produce a translatory movement. Here in this image, you can see it is saying that the center of resistance of a multi-rooted teeth lies 1 to 2 mm apical to its furcation. So, for a teeth or for a multi-rooted teeth, the center of resistance is approximately 1 to 2 mm, 1 to 2 mm apical to its furcation. This is the furcation. It is 1 to 2 mm apical to its furcation. Now, let us see this diagram here. The center of resistance of the maxilla is roughly located above the roots of the premolar teeth okay so here we have the center of resistance of the maxilla now let us see the center of rotation okay so center of rotation is the point around which the tooth rotates or you can say tips when the force is applied away from the center of resistance of tooth so, center of rotation is a point on which if you apply force, the tooth will rotate around this point. You can see if you are applying force here, the tooth is rotating. This is fixed, but the tooth is rotating around this point. So, this is the center of rotation. And it changes according to the force of application. So, let us see. If we are applying the force at the incisal edge, it will result in torquing. Okay. And if we are applying at the root apex, it will be controlled tipping. And if we are applying away from the root apex, here in this case, it will result in uncontrolled tipping. And if it is outside the tooth, it will cause intrusion or extrusion. Alright? Now coming to the uses of headgears. The first use is to restrain the forward and downward growth of maxilla. We don't want forward 
and we don't want downward growth of maxilla so to restrict this we do second one is molar distalization if you want to distalize the molar it could be used so this will help in the correction of class 2 molar relationship and it will also relieve the crowding the third one the headgears can be used to reinforce the molar anchorage in high anchorage cases so the headgear should be worn for 10 hours per day and the minimum force should be at least 300 g per side so the third use was to reinforce the molar anchorage in the cases when we need more anchorage okay then we have the fourth one it is an effective way of maintaining arch length by preventing mesial migration of the molars obviously since it is causing this lysization it is kind of preventing the mesial migration of molar it is preventing the mesial migration of molar so with this we end the headgear now let's come to the face mask So when we have to treat the class 3 cases when we have a patient of class 3 and we want to treat what we have to do we have to restrict the mandibular growth because class 3 as you know it is because the maxilla is backwardly placed or the mandible is forwardly placed so this is a class 3 case so if we have to treat the class 3 case we have to restrict the mandibular growth and we have to cause forward maxillary growth and also downward maxillary growth so two things we need therefore the head gears which will cause this so this is the opposite of what we were doing before before we were causing distal movement of maxilla in the case of head gear right but now what we are doing we are causing we are trying to get the maxilla forward so these kind of head gears which causes the forward pull on the maxilla they are called the reverse pull head gear obviously it is doing the reverse of what we studied before so it is called the reverse pull head gear now the principle on which it works so it works in the principle of pulling the maxillary structures forward as i told with the help of anchorage from the chin or forehead or usually both so when you see the diagram of the face mask you will realize that we are taking anchorage from the chin or the forehead or usually both okay let us see the indications so the face mask is used in growing patients having a prognathic mandible and a retrusive maxilla okay so they are used in the patient having a prognathic mandible means mandible is forward and a retrusive maxilla because it aids in pulling the maxillary structures forward and it pushes the mandibular structures backward the second indication is that it could be used for bending the condylar neck for stimulating the tmj adaptation the third indication is that it can be used for selective rearrangement of the palatal shelf in the cleft patient the fourth one is that it is used in correction of post surgical relapse after osteotomies to correct the post surgical relapse relapse okay also it can be used to treat certain problems like you know problem with the nose nose morphology like your nose is laterally deviated in that case it could be used so that's the indication now let us see the parts of a face mask so as i told it gets anchorage from the forehead and the chin usually both usually a face mask is made up of some components we have a metal framework we have a chin cup or pad here we have a forehead cap here and we have intraoral appliances and we have heavy elastics you can see the elastics here 
Now type of reverse pull headgear. We have protraction headgear, delay face mask. We have Tübinger model of face mask and we have petted type of face mask. We'll study about each one of them. Let us see delay face mask. So here you can see delay type of face mask. In this, you can see it is made up of rigid square shaped metal framework and it connects the chin cup to the forehead pad and has a wire for elastic attachment. All right. Now let us see the Tübinger model of face mask. So it is a modified version of face mask. We have a forehead cap and we have a chin cup and these are connected with the help of two midline metal rod and also you can see a adjustable crossbar is attached in the front of the mouth to engage the elastics. Now let us see the petted type face mask. So it is called the petted type face mask because petted was the person who did modifications to the dealer's face mask and he got this. So what modification he did? He increased the amount of force generated. He increased the amount of force generated. Thus, he decreased the overall treatment time. When you increase the amount of force, the treatment time will decrease. And here you can see the appliance is made up of a single midline rod connecting the forehead and the chin. Now let us see the chin cup. So chin cup is an extra oral orthopedic device which is useful in the treatment of class 3 malocclusion that occurs due to protrusive mandible. Let me draw a mandible here. This is a protrusive mandible let's suppose and relatively normal maxilla. So maxilla is normal in case of chin cup but the problem lies with the mandible. It is protrusive. So it is used in the treatment of class 3 malocclusion. Okay. Let us see the philosophy of chin cup therapy. So if you know the mandible grows by a position of bone at the condyle okay, and along the free posterior border free posterior border so the mandible grows this way so condylar growth is in response to the translation of the surrounding tissues the surrounding tissues involved in the growth of the mandible thus the chin cup therapy is used to restrict the growth of the mandible this way because we have a force here so we are not allowing the mandible to grow basic chin cup appliance design so we have a head cap here you can see we have a force module here and we have a chin cup now let us see the two ways to use the chin cup the first way you can see here the line of force is acting through the condyle so here somewhere here we'll have our condyle of the mandible so the line of force acting through the condyle So in this method, we have no opening of the mandibular plane angle. So this method causes no opening of the mandibular plane angle. Now the second way to use is the line of force is acting below the condyle. So here will be our condyle and the line of force is below the condyle. So in this, the chin is rotated downward and backward and less force is applied and increase in the facial height is achieved for a decrease in the prominence of chin. So the facial height will increase and the prominence will decrease. All right. Now what if you apply the vertical force on chin? So this will result if this is a chin and we are applying vertical force on the chin. This will result in the decrease in the mandibular plane angle decrease in mandibular plane angle 
there will be decrease in the gonial angle gonial angle i'll make another video explaining all these things gonial angle and the third one is increase in the posterior facial height increase in the posterior facial height now let's talk about the magnitude of force so most authors recommend a force of 300 to 600 gram per side okay so initially low force is applied about 150 gram of force will apply so that the patient get used to it and then we'll increase the force to 300 or 600 okay now the duration of wear it is maximum 12 to 14 hours per day of the chin cup wear okay Now let us see the effects of chin cup. The first effect is the redirection of the mandibular growth. Obviously, we have a protrusive mandible and we are applying a chin cup here. So we are redirecting the mandibular growth in downward as well as a backward direction. The second effect is that it will remodel the mandible and it will decrease the mandibular plane angle and the gonial angle as we studied by the vertical effect, right? So it will cause the decrease in the mandibular plane angle and it will also decrease the gonial angle gonial angle the third is it will cause lingual tipping of the lower incisor the lower incisor will be tipped lingually if this is the lingual side therefore chin cup works well in patient with reduced or normal lower anterior face height but is contraindicated in long face patient keep this in mind now indications of the chin cup therapy so in cases of mild skeletal problem and in case of short vertical facial height vertical facial height and it is also indicated when we have normally positioned or protrusive but not retrusive lower incisor when our incisors are either normally positioned or protrusive now let us see the types of chin cup therapy i'm already very tired exhausted <laughs> okay so we have the occipital pull chin cup we have the vertical pull chin cup so occipital pull chin cup it is used in class 3 cases with mild to moderate mandibular prognathism who can bring the incisor in an edge to edge position at centric relation. So in such patient who can bring the incisor in edge to edge position means upper incisor and lower incisor they come like this edge to edge means the edge go inside. So in that cases and they also have mild to moderate mandibular prognathism. Okay, in that case, we use occipital pull chin cup. Then we have the vertical pull chin cup. Let us see the image here, not this one. See the image here. So this is the vertical pull chin cup. As you can see, it derives anchorage from the parietal region here. So it is indicated in high angle cases or long face patient so it is indicated in long face patient long face patient because it helps to close the angle of mandible and also increase the posterior facial height now let us proceed some commercially available ones are the soft elastic appliance the hickam type appliance the unitech design the summit design okay so by this we end the lecture for today i hope you found it helpful i'll try better next time to explain the things more and take smaller topics so that you don't get that boredom feeling as well if you like the video please don't forget to share subscribe and comment and my next video is going to be something related to dental histology because so many people requested me a dental histology video so i think i should focus more on that Thanks for watching. Take care. Allah Hafiz.